so okay <coughs> uh, today our discussion is about permissions permissions in the big ledger permissions in the account.com uh, traditionally when we do uh, the ERP system like let's say wavelet ERP okay so there are a few types of permission that we uh, we need to take care of. for example whether a user has got a permission to use a certain module or a certain function and let's just say the user can create issue a cash sales and uh, we just need to define if he can create the cash sales is for branch A or branch B or branch C. And that's about it. That's it. And then uh, in Wavelet EMP, um, so in EMP, this is the old one. Number one, we just need to decide whether a user can access to a certain module. Module, and if you can access to certain function, uh, module or function, uh, which branch or which company, okay? Uh, Soleda, any other permission in EMP? <coughs> and also, we assign the, the a user to a role. Mm. So we assign first first step assign a user to a row. Mm, because our permission by row. Okay, so the permission is set by row. Okay. 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 So <coughs> It's that simple. That's it. <coughs> Finish. No more. And the thing is, in the EMP, let's just say a user do not have a permission to access something. Uh, because all the logic is in the web server. It means that it's in the web server, whereby uh, I have a JBoss here. If he does not have a permission to create the invoice for branch A or branch B when I send the HTML to the web browser I hide the drop down list of the branch A so he doesn't get to when he issue the invoice he doesn't get to choose the branch A not in the HTML lah. then ok lah, let's just say he has a permission to, to select from branch D then uh, he select the permission, then he submit the invoice. Then he create the invoice in the database, in the JBoss, oh, no problem. It is uh, controlled very easily, okay? So there are a few areas. When we look at the permissions and all this, it is extremely different. It's a totally different level. One is like at the top, one is uh, like a basic. <coughs> to begin with, First of all, when we look at the cloud native architecture, which is a cloud native architecture, you have an API here. This API, of course, you have your Java codes. And then uh, you have your database here, yes, fine. Then you have your Angular application in the web browser. Now, it may look similar. You also have a web browser, the Angular, you also have a JBoss. It may look similar. But it is very extremely different because in the JBoss, I can store the user information, uh, what permission he has, and all that as a session variable. I can store it as a session variable. So when he submit, uh, I straight away pull from the session variable uh, whether can do, cannot do, or something like that. I can do the checking. But when it comes to the API, uh, I don't store the permission anywhere, no. And I cannot store the permission anywhere because this is a serverless architecture. That means that it has no memory of uh, the user login and all that. 
because and anybody the whole world you can call the API okay and it is not safe for me to actually store the permission list here not safe at all because if I store this in the web browser anybody can go to the web browser change and then uh, they can do what they want right so <coughs> So number one, architectural differences. That means that number one in the big ledger, when we develop a cloud native architecture, the per we, due to the architecture difference, the way we store the permission, the way we define the permission is already different. Number two is that more Flexibility. Okay, what I mean by flexibility. Okay, Suheda or Jesse or whoever that used the EMP before, let me ask you this question. In EMP, you assign the permission to the role, then after that you you link the user to the role. Correct, not? Can you or can you not actually assign the role? Uh, assign a permission directly to the user. Currently, Currently cannot, right? No. Currently cannot. You cannot yeah. assign the permission directly to the user. Yeah, because you need to select the role first in order to give permission. That is EMP. Oh. But in Big Ledger, we are super kiasu. How what I mean by kiasu is that not only I can actually assign the permission to create a branch, to create this, create that directly to the role or directly to the user I have another added layer which is group it means that you think of here is a user group and then role this user can link to the group is it one to one, one to many or many to many relationship how many people say one to one? nobody how many people say one to many? One to many. One user can join many groups. Yes, many groups. Jesse, one to many or many to many or one to one. Many groups. Many users can go to many groups. Many users can go to many groups. Many users can go to many groups. Okay, M to M. Yes. Ah, okay. So. <coughs> One group can have many different users, one user can have many different groups. So, and then, the group to the row, is it one to many, or many to many, or, or one to one? Huh? Which one? How many? Okay, both, huh? How many say one to one? Three. How many say one to many? How many say many to many? Many to many? Answer is many to many. Okay, now user to row. Many to many. Ah, many to many. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But ah, uh, this one is tricky ah. Uh. Usually, uh, user to role, when you attend the SQL training, you know that there's one intermediate table. Yeah, yeah. But what about the relationship? Uh, it's not just a role to user direct. Uh. What if my relationship of the role to the user is through the group? <laughs> so, <coughs> yes, I have a direct many to many, but with this row, then I need to have permission lah. Permissions, okay? Can create invoice, cannot create invoice, you know, and things like that. So, so I have permissions, but then I have another problem. Let's say can create invoice, but I have uh, some uh, people they can create invoice but only for this company and I configure the create invoice to be by company not by branch huh? but another guy I configure the create invoice by branch 
because sometimes the accountant [ah] (err) they in charge of the whole company so every time they add one branch [ah] you tell her [ah] (err) sorry [ah] my create invoice is my branch [one] [ah] and I have three companies you cannot do all branches but only for this company this one E_M_P cannot do right so end up that means that the in E_M_P either you give the permission by branch is all branches or certain branches you cannot make the permission to sometimes assigned by company sometimes assigned by branch either all branches or not but but you cannot solve this situation when you have more than one company company one company two this is branch one branch two branch three branch four branch five branch six in wavelet E_M_P either you all branches all branches or you select by a certain branch but if I have a situation where I want to assign this accountant to take care of these two company you regardless of the branch but not all the branches then I'm stuck already then I have to grant this (err) accountant branch by branch in E_M_P and then every time and then need to choose slowly so it gets stuck but in a big ledger what we can do is that we can have the flexibility whereby to create an invoice you can actually assign by company or assign by branch so when it comes to this permission it is like (err) like (err) way more advance (err) and (err) beyond this right and also let's just say I have (err) I have (err) many permission create invoice permission okay the thing is that when I have this permission sometimes I need to be assigning to the branch sometimes assigning to the different group so I need to have a permission assignee and target okay you have to be very clear [ah] especially cindy and jessie [ah] because when you are doing the product [ah] you you have to be very clear which one is which one and then (err) sometimes the programmer whether they save save it correctly or not permissions okay so this permission will be foreign key pointing to the permission table so I have a permission table create invoice create edit invoice can build this report build that report okay so this permission will will foreign key to the permission table [lah] then the assignee [ah] !wah! is a dynamic one [ah] that means that this permission you can grant it to a role or you can grant it to a group or you can grant it to a user but when you grant it to a role if the user has got a di~ indirect relationship linking either directly to the role or through the group then go to the role then the user will have this permission if the target which is either by company by branch by (err) entity which is like the business customer or some by this by that [lah] okay so (ppc) what you see here where this one will foreign key to also a dynamic maybe to company by branch by entity by whatever this one will be foreign key to here this one to here and this one also foreign key to here !wah! this one is it the many to many relationship or what you see this table go here go there go here this one is what we call the star schema star schema okay so in one table you actually foreign key to multiple places so it's like the star schema already okay so (ppc) now taking this one step further one level up whereby we have a master table master database
and then uh, this is a master. Then we have many tenants, Seng Heng, Cell Lab, uh, Home Mart Online, or whoever customer last under mesh, whatever. So we have many different tenants. So <coughs> the master database table and the tenant database table, all of them use the same schema. Same database schema, which is what you see here, same one. So now, although they use the same schema, but they are the schema in this database are used differently. I give you an example. In the master database, when you say create a user, create a group, it makes sense, lah. But in the master database, you don't issue invoice one. Master database is not for issuing invoice. There's no accounting module. Although the table is there, but we are not going to use the master table for issuing any of the invoice. The tenant database table has got the invoice la, balance sheet, P and L, you know, and all those things. Then it makes sense. So, although they have the same schema, when the same group group database table in the master master database, we call it group. And to avoid any confusion when we are doing software development, the same group database table, when they are being used in the tenant, we call it team. So this one we call it team. And then uh, this row, also to avoid confusion, when it is in the master database table, we call it master row, MST row. When it is in the tenant, we call it uh, TNT row. Okay, we call it tenant row and uh, the group. And the user, of course it appears is the master table. Ma. So when a user is being added to a tenant, we will actually make copy the same unique ID, GUID, from the master table to the tenant, okay? So, let's just say I'm a user in the master, uh, I created a tenant, so in this tenant, I'm the owner. But in a different tenant, maybe I'm a member. Another tenant, I'm just an admin, or something like that. So, <coughs> so, now, so now you can differentiate lah the tenant and the master permission. So for people who come from the EMP background, the permissions in the tenant, I think you're quite familiar lah, great invoice can see, generate profit and loss or you know, things like that. Yeah, not that difficult lah. But I guarantee you will be confused in the master, master. Because our okay. When a person visit a website called account.com, okay, when you go to account.com, if let's just say I have 1,000 tenants or 1 million tenants, do you think it makes sense every time somebody log in, I shoot 1,000, 1 million connections to every single database and do the search whether he is in the database or not? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all. So what happened is that <coughs> when we designed this multi-tenant uh, serverless cloud architecture, we actually need to be very clear-minded that when they log into this website, account.com, right? You guys seen it before, right? The account.com. So when the moment you log in, actually we will not go to the tenant. We will only load the, the permissions and all those things in the master. So that is why you will see all these applet just like your mobile phone. When you log into your mobile phone without opening any of the apps, you don't need to log in the apps, right? you're just logging in the mobile phone. Only, right? But in the mobile phone, you can actually configure the app, pull the applet, position them, and then uh, change the setting, background color, whatever you want to change. So what I'm trying to say is that when a person use the account.com platform, the moment they log in, I will not touch any of the tenant database unless, unless 
they click into here let's say yeah uh, let's say uh, this is a create invoice function this is another create invoice function are uh, two in create invoice function uh, but i can make the applet in such a way that this first create invoice function is for syncing tenant syncing database the second create invoice uh, is for a different cell lab okay so uh, this part is different from mobile phone uh. mobile phone you have one applet means one app only that's it finished but for the account account because of the multi-tenant nature and when they click on the great invoice um, we split into two for some very good reason I will explain to you the reason why uh, this part Cindy need to understand 100% Okay, 100% need to understand. You cannot be confused, and you can ask me any question you want. Because <coughs> if you look at how many of you have seen the bit bucket, you have seen the bit bucket, right? Okay, so if you look at the, let's say uh, bit bucket, okay, I want you to look at the bit bucket. The moment I go into Bitbucket, the first one is I can change the account. Let's say um, I have a few account, Big Ledger, la, Wavelet, la, Sengheng or whatever. When I change this, this one will change. Okay. So <coughs> each applet is like when I use the Big Ledger, each of the applet, I can actually click settings and then I can click user and then I can add user to the applet now the reason why we need to actually make this user permission to be on a per applet basis is because we're gonna have thousands of applet and we want to make each of the applet as independent as possible when we make each of the applet as independent as possible, that way, a user who install an applet, he only needs to know what is in this applet he's done. Usually, an ERP system, people feel very confused, very complex. It's because when they go into this permission, wow, there's 10,000 permission. I don't even know which permission is which one. I'm, I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. You understand? So, <coughs> So that means that when somebody install this applet as the owner of the applet, he can add the admin, he can add the uh, cashier, he can create the role within the applet or something like that and assign according permission. Let's say Suhaida, in EMP we have uh, things like uh, can sell below cost. Mm. Yes, somebody can issue a cash sale but he can sell below cost. Uh, and this selling uh, item below cost is actually uh, settings and the configurations that is very specific to this applet only. O only for this applet because other so applet only the sell below cost one, uh, right? And the control of whether a user can do the sell below cost and all this. In future, if you want to make this a platform, I cannot predict and imagine each of the applet how many permission they need I don't know because but I need to design a structure in such a way that any app developer if they sign up an account they can actually create the permissions their own permissions that is specific for this applet and yet they can store this thing into our database in the API oh this is a different ball game already so <coughs> what I'm saying is that each front-end developer can have their customized version of their permissions to do whatever control whatever but yet at the same time it can map to the different API <sighs> a lot of programmer the system will hang at this stage already they already hang how how does it happen, right? So, so um, 
to to put you all of you into perspective to put all of you into perspective when we sign up a facebook account when you sign up a facebook account can you use facebook without the facebook group can right you can use facebook there are some default apps right so in in this account.com is the same thing that when we sign into this platform when we, i first sign up uh, i have some default apple uh, you, 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 you first buy a new android yeah. phone uh, okay. you have settings yeah. what else you have a web browser, a call out, a few right? So you have a camera, a few basic one. So same thing, when the user sign up to the account.com platform, they have some basic one. Now, when they want to create new, uh, app, install app, so they will have to go to the Play Store. It's like the Play Store, okay, or App Store in the Apple. Go to the App Store. But the problem is, the problem is. If I'm the boss of second, my staff, uh, you so many staff one by one go to the app store and then fill in and then pay and then confirm. Wow, it's very troublesome. So if I'm the boss of the second, what I want to do is actually I want to create a few catalog. So catalog one is for finance manager. Catalog two is for finance executive. Catalog three is for. Um, uh, catalog 3 is for cashier, catalog 4 is for logistic because I know that for finance manager you need to have access to certain applet. This applet is PL applet, balance sheet applet, uh, 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 cash flow applet, or something applet that uh, specific to the finance manager. So <coughs> after I create the catalog, then I will add certain applet to the catalog. After I add this applet to the catalog, I have two options. Because if I have thousands of employees, although I add this applet to the catalog and then I grant permission to a certain group or row of a users to have access to this catalog, this is at the master level. And as I add this catalog, <laughs> applet to the catalog, some of this catalog, like I explained to you, great invoice, may need to be specific to a certain tenant. And if I am the owner or the admin of a tenant, that, that tenant, then I can associate the great invoice to that tenant. But if I am only a member of the tenant, I cannot associate it because if I associate it uh, well, like that, if I'm a member of a tenant, I go and install, create a catalog, I go and install the PL applet like that, I can see everything in the company already. Right uh. So <coughs> so when I actually look at each of the catalog, after I create the catalog, I need to assign the user or the group or the role of people that can access the catalog and what applet is in the catalog and associate each of the applet to the catalog to a tenant then uh, uh, if I'm a user I, I'm the accountant when I go to the play store I will open the play store and if I'm a member of any of the catalog then uh, when I open the this uh, Play Store applet, then I will see the catalog, then I click install because I have a permission. But sometimes, if I'm a senior finance manager, I'm too busy, I will one by one install the applet, it's too troublesome. The person who maintain the catalog can also maybe click one button and install on behalf of the user. Is it clear? Yeah. So, <coughs> and each of the applet, uh, because if I'm a programmer, uh, create an applet, uh, then uh, he has access to uh, the entire company information, all the customer database and all that stuff. Uh. It's not good, what? Right? Mm -hmm. So, just like Apple, 
or Google. Let's say you want to de develop an Android app, uh, then you say that my app requires the, the user's location or can access contacts and all those. Google will ask you why. Why you want to access his contact or something. Unless you are creating an application that is justified to do that, then only they let your app, app to access those permissions. To access those data. There's another set of permissions. So, and each of the applet, when I want to create an invoice, obviously I have to call the customer data ma. Uh, I need to call the item code ma. I need to call this call that ma. I need to call many things. But the moment you create a function like this, you need to have how many API. So which applet should have which API uh, crisscross with the row, crisscross with the group, crisscross with the catalog crisscross with which applet, which tenant, whether you are admin or not. That is why creating a platform, a cloud native, is a totally different ball game from a typical monolith application. So for Cindy, and Josephine and Jesse. Now, just now we just talk about permission only. We haven't talked about billing. We haven't talked about many other things. Uh, who can see the billing? Who can see not which applet and all that stuff? It's enough already, uh. Uh, uh, This is just uh, just all within within the big ledger platform, uh. If you start looking at the database here, okay. Wow, I have another login provider. What login provider? Let's say on the account platform, we want to allow the user to sign in with Facebook, to sign in with Google, and then we want to be able to allow the user sign in with Google already uh, after they create some invoice. Uh, we can save the PDF file to their Google Drive. And then we want to be able to generate something right here, update the Google spreadsheet of the user in his Google Drive. Not our Google Drive, his Google Drive. Oh, hey. So, when you want to create a Google access to Google, Google also require you to create different app. <laughs> Each of the app will have a different permission and all that stuff. Oh, different ball game already. And then, this is account.com. Now, our good friend Cell Lab, he say, I don't like account.com. I want my stuff to go to HTTP. Lab dot account dot net. I want my own name. Okay, I want my own name. So uh, maybe uh, I pay wavelet, I customize certain applet, but I want this applet uh, can only installable in my domain. I pay you ma, I don't want my applet to install other place, cannot me? Of course can uh. So that means that even for the applet to be have the ability to be added to the catalog, just now we were tying the applet to the tenant lah. But now we also may need to specify this applet can install, but only for which domain. Uh, this one has to be configured by the developer. And then ah, uh, cell lab say your cell lab account.com uh, like this I can I can not pretty I have an e-commerce website uh. my e-commerce website is uh, looks like this uh. my e-commerce website uh, follow my own design not like icon icon like that I don't want the mobile interface is fully my own design 
and when my users sign up to this website, I don't even want them to know what you have in the account.com. For my own employee, never mind, lah, I can access. Lah. But for, for my customer, I do not want them to know the existence of the back end. That means that when we add the user, not only we need to add to the master, behind the scene we also need to add to the each of the tenant. Okay. So this permission so far we are just talking about can can call the API, cannot call by certain branch. What about the file permission? Uh? File permission, I'm referring to, you go to Google Drive, uh, you can click the share, right? <coughs> when you click the share here, you can click here, you can change the permission type, whether it's public on the web or whether it's uh, something like that. Then uh, you can add a group of users or individual person. Okay. And sometimes uh, this group, uh, sometimes this group, it can be group, it can be team. If it is group, it's in the master. If it is team, it is in the talent. Okay. So now, uh, you get the hang of how complex the permission is and for the non-technical users although you are not programmers there is a very high and likely chance that when you design the user interface if you do not understand these relationships you will be creating some interface that totally do not make sense and you will miss out all the requirements that are required to actually the steps, the workflow. Okay, if I have this, then I need to actually add the tenant first and then uh, uh, something first, something next. And at the, one of the early things that the product team may need to do, for example, we want to start allowing people to subscribe to our Big Ledger platform. So they need to actually start creating tenant. So the person who have a subscription, create a subscription in our system that will pay for the tenant cost. The tenant cost is again different from the applet cost. Because some of the applets we charge per transaction, some of the applet we charge per user, some we charge free, some, some we charge uh, per company, per branch, or there are different way of charging. So, any questions so far? No question. The question is, this, uh, for this one, account.com, you said like uh, the update for like creating invoice for same time what's the invoice for seller. This is only for the internal, right? For the for like for the same hand, okay. they will see only their applets. Yeah. Not other other properties. Depends on what applet they install. Let's say if I'm a member of this account.com uh, I'm a member of Sengheng Tenant, I'm an admin of a cell lab tenant, but I'm a uh, what and they grant me the catalog and I go to the catalog, I install the applet. Then uh, I will be able to see great invoice for second great invoice for cell lab. I, I, I can okay, see. Yeah. But they only said only their company. Yeah. So <coughs> on the surface, when you log into this website, you only access the master database table, but, 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 the moment you click <coughs> open this, it, it already go into the tenant database. But sometimes, sometimes, if I have an applet called the product information applet and this product information applet is to pull from information from another tenant although my own tenant is thinking 
but Samsung created the tenant in my platform. So Samsung created this tenant in my platform and he grant me the permission. Then I can click this applet to copy uh, product information from another tenant. But each applet has got a main tenant. But it, it may be able to access to other tenants information as a guest, but not as a main. Uh, but bear in mind also, there are some applet don't have tenant one. For example, user profile, my own email, I update my own birthday, my background, and all those, those don't, don't nothing to do with tenant. Okay. <coughs> okay. So far, what we discussed is just permission <coughs> level logically. Uh. So now I want you to start thinking we are developing an online and offline capable app. Just like G Suite, Google Docs, it can be online, offline. So when it can be online and offline, it means that when people do a point of sales, uh, you tell them that every time you issue a cash sale, uh, I will go and fetch 3,000 items from the database to the web browser uh, for every time you scan. Uh, oh, the performance of the is very, very slow, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what happened is that we actually need to store the data in the local, local inside the web browser called IndexedDB. We, we store it inside the IndexedDB. But let's just say this web browser is a sh in a shared computer. So when uh, uh, I log in, so it sync all the data, financial data into the thing. Then I log out, and then another user log in. Oh shit, the data is there, man. That means I also need to consider which data is shareable and which data is not shareable. And every time when I log in to the web browser, I may load the permissions to store in the web browser also to, for speed reason. I don't need to keep hitting the web server, the API. So I need to store it in the web browser. So when I want to store it in the web browser, I will sort of like uh, have to cache it. But when I cache it, if I also want to allow offline access, I also need to hash the password so that it is stored in the database such that uh, 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 without internet connection, I can still log in. Oh. And I have not discussed about, let's say this is account.com, right? If each of these applets, let's say some of you want to be entrepreneur, then you develop your own system application. You don't want to give me the source code, which is fine. But I want to be able to load your module into here. So uh, uh, there's a more browser cross site, all this permission, all these things, yeah. all the things that we need to manage. Just now, as I was talking about the file system, right? So if you belong to a tenant, you save a file, it is saved into the S3. If let's say I upload an image, you also upload an image. I send you an image, email, email, everybody upload the image. So I will end up having multiple copies of the same files in the server. And then uh, what happens is that uh, when you have multiple copies of the same files in the, in the server, you have a problem because they take too much space. I we upload, upload again. So what we do is that in the file, we will do a hashing with SHA-512 algorithm, 512, so that uh, each of the file will have a unique signature. And then uh, after that, uh, we will control the permissions using a database table. Uh, uh, we'll store this uh, at the app file, in this file. And then uh, we have to link it to the permission again. And we want to create a, a Google Drive, a, a like kind of a permission. You can share link or something like that. Okay. So, questions? Questions?
just that just now when I talk about the Google Facebook permission uh, those part uh, I think it will take me at least half a day you know to slowly talk about the uh, various things I don't want to go deep into it uh. I just cover the basic stuff uh, in the in the big later platform Cindy you have any questions <laughs> No, we, we just call it differently, but the it's the same database table. Yeah, we know. I know it's the same table. Because somebody building something in the same way. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, the team, you have to go to the, t the tenant database to see the, the group table. Then you can see the, 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 the team list. The tenant database is the same with the one Schema is the same. Schema is the same. But data different. The actual record inside is different. The structure is the same. Let's say, uh, Josephine, when you did the mock-up, screen mock-up, right? Why I say got logic problem is because when you do the screen mock-up, when I see certain field that you put, I think you're not sure whether this one is uh, in the tenant or in the master. Yeah. Uh, so, so I can tell you, uh, usually people do uh, product development and design and all that in other companies or on a normal application. Very simple, only draw picture, ma, draw input box, input email name, picture, whatever, drop down list. But for people who do the product design here, like people like Cindy, Jesse, or Omar, or whatever, actually, they need to be super analytical and understand what's the impact, where the data is stored, how, how it works. So the intern, uh, actually, when we start ask you to do the angular, you say, oh, you're boring watching video, I want to do straight away. Then you start doing, you start, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, um, uh, but, but uh, for, for this one, if you want to, you know, uh, uh, either do this one or some of the other things needed, I'm fine. That means that I let you open. If you still have a chance to work with our company to go deep into the cloud native in the future, then you will go deep. Uh, that one is real. Real fun also, uh, challenging but very fun. Uh. Okay, good question. No, <coughs> in the master database, usually we store a list of applets. We store a list of global users that cut because across all the, from the all tenants. Uh, all tenants. We store the user interface because each of the user, maybe they, they drag the icon to here, they arrange their desktop differently. So those things need to be stored into the master database. Yeah. And then we will store uh, uh, maybe subscription, some of the cloud resources because in the master database, you need to understand that when you hit the master database, you need to know how many tenant are there? And then, uh, 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 then each tenant, uh, which user have access to which tenant or something like that? Some some basic information at the global level. Then I say for my salmon, right? Then salmon, they have a few more salmon, salmon, salmon Paris, Mon, vertical, and then uh, academy. So these five are individually tenant. Uh, no. Okay. Each of the tenant, it can support more than one company. They share the same data, uh, same customer table, and uh, same item code table, and same entity table. But if Salmon say, if the customer say, I don't want this company to see the customer of my another company. 
in that case, then they have to be different them. tenant. Mm. Of course, we can build a lot more filtering, labeling, whatever permission and stuff. Can now, but quite tough lah. I mean, yeah, the LSM just put different tenant out there. You know, uh, uh, this is also something that we just went to Paparish. We asked him, hey, you use auto count ah? You, you auto count SQL accounting ah? You ask them one question. When you create a new company ah, do you create a new database? They say yes. Then I have five companies, I have five database. Each time I create a GL code, I need to go in and create five times alone. Mm -hmm. And then if my accountant uh, do a transaction, uh, oh, this one company one, well, I have to close this, log in again to this company, do, 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 finish already, I have to exit, then I log in to another company, do. No. But in our system, each tenant or even the EMP, we can support one database, multiple company. sharing the same customer they have other one tenant is not from but they say they don't want to let them see yeah, then they will be a different tenant different tenant so let's say for someone's right that one is they don't want the license see to see their customer ah. but they want to see their uh, the licensee's customer so ah, uh, that licensee cannot see someone someone can see licensee's okay. customer then in that case there are a few ways i can do i can create each tenant for each licensee then each of these licensees, they will grant permissions to the, the, the Salmon HQ, the user of the Salmon HQ. And then, uh, uh, then they can see theirs, but Salmon HQ can see theirs, but they cannot see that. Because each tenant we have to power up a new database. Yeah, then it's not practical. Uh, so now it's the same for them. Is that even if they don't want to power another database for them, then it's permission granting. Uh, uh, permission granting lah. Okay, permission granting ah. Uh, sometimes uh, you want to go to until so customized level is quite tough. So what we do is that we can be maybe at the Angular side lah. We, we filter lah. But at the API side, permission we don't block lah. You know, so if he's like really smart now, uh, then he can actually call the API directly to pull the, the, the all the customer. Uh. But of course, at the Angular side, we can hide or block or something like that, or only limit the search. Is that possible? Let's say within the tenant, we also can like uh, the just that separation. Yes, we can. Yeah, it's the it's the same thing. Uh, let's say for example, we can create invoice or view invoice by branch man. So for the same reason, you can actually make the create invoice, create the, uh, uh, something built by customer. Now if you look at Sengheng project, Sengheng project is we have multiple suppliers. So each of the suppliers is not supposed to see each other's sales to the Sengheng. Lah. But each of the supplier actually link to certain number of users. So uh, based on this number of users, then uh, they can see only their company shared record. Oh. <laughs> so, so this thing, because when we create the API, we have to make the API uh, to be as low level as possible when you create micro services so that. At the higher level, you can actually make sure that this low level component uh, can support all kinds of scenario in the best possible way. So, so, uh, uh, um, so there's a lot of uh, analysis, uh, uh, thinking, permission, designing, and uh, when it comes to designing this uh, API, not not just your API in two weeks, uh, I'll create something, uh, Jason, get postman, die and tell him. And one is uh, undergraduate level, okay, lah. but if you move beyond undergraduate level, you go to the industry, uh, you have to consider so many things. Uh. So I don't know, so I think some. Blown Peng San lagi lah, ni ni Peng San apa? Ni dia ni lah.
Oh yeah. And uh, uh ha, ha, what? Hani Hanisa. Uh, oh? Okay, I understand. Okay, oh, I understand. Any question or <laughs> One. Is the account account platform specific to a specific tenant or is it accessible by everyone? Accessible by everyone. But they cannot see others. They have to install the app uh, And they can only install the app of a specific tenant yeah, yeah. if they have are the owner the admin. Ah so so you actually yeah, have to yeah, actually yeah. consider the very so there will be hacker one uh, very smart so you have to actually think okay what's coming next first or something like that how you control manage it all possible <laughs> all possible co combinations and permutations yeah. for the developer they can see it. Uh, so we also need to create a developer role yeah. for yeah. For, for our own yeah. employee big agent employee uh, uh, Cindy at the yeah. master yeah. database yeah. level. We also need to create a group or role for our own employee. But this one is at the master level, not at the tenant level. <laughs> and some API, uh, some API uh, is used both at the master and at the tenant level. Like for example, creating a group, creating a, a user or something like that. And sometimes, uh, when they change the record in the tenant, uh, you need to make sure that it's updated back to the master yes, as well as the other tenant that are using this user. Mm. Uh, so what information to store there and not to store there uh, the, uh, for every single field, every single table, and possible combinations we actually need to consider. Uh, for the cell the account on the right, if they enter the uh, web, the website for the cell phone, they just enter the tenant database. Uh, they have to log in also, because they because uh, let's say for example uh, I give you an example uh, you go to an e-commerce website uh, sometimes you don't need to log in also you can see the product list uh, surprise uh, correct not so. If we open this API, don't need permission to access, we may face a problem with another customer that tell us, wait hey brother, I use your system, I didn't say I want to use the e-commerce, uh. I only want to use your backend account.com. Then you allow the API to call all my product out, then all my information leak to the public. Lah. You understand? Yeah. Them, uh? So. So when it comes to actually calling the API, uh, the when we uh, the programmer who really actually think like thoroughly have to imagine all kind of uh, possible scenarios, all possible scenarios. Yeah. And that is why even at the user, uh, let's say at the user, we have, uh, let's say Vincent is the user, I have a login subject and then I have a login principle. So in this login principle, it means that, oh, yes, I'm Vincent, but I can log in using Vincent, Lee Hong Fei and the password, username or password. I have another principle is I want to log in through a telephone, mobile phone. So I log in with a phone number, a uh, short code, then I, with the short code, uh, then I log in. But sometimes, without telling other people the password, I want to actually create a access key. So this access key, I can give it to other people to actually to access the system, to do run something in the background, some process in the server, without telling them my password and then when I give the grant this access key it is still me but for this access key it can only do certain API it's customized yeah otherwise this access key can reset my own password yeah. and then I'll take control all uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. so when it comes to Developing this application and the platform, 
a hell lot of work lah to, to consider eh Sadro so are, are you going into the permission already? yeah I go through the permission not, not in not something here right? or you? half of it half of this a lot of things if you ask the programmer sit down you sit down and then you think what are the possibility very hard to actually think of all the possible scenarios not even myself very hard one a lot of things uh, you have to do uh, until you reach the stage and uh, then you realize oh actually i need this any more questions if not we will adjourn the meeting okay i think enough of uh, brain, brain circulation <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.